Hey Jonathan here at Colfax Math. Today I'm going to go over trig functions, a super easy five step process to get it right every time. When we're done graphing them on the board, I'm going to show you how to graph them on a TI 84. Laminated overnight on a CNC cut jig. Jonathan here, I'm going to go over graphing trig functions. I got a five step process to guarantee the right every time. So we're looking at both sine and cosine trig functions. There's five things you need to pay attention to. Uh, and here's my five step process. So step one is mark up the equation. Step two is label a y axis. Label the x axis. Put in your critical points of what function it is and check your work. So I'm gonna run through that in a second. Where I'm gonna start is right here. This is a general equation for a trig function. And before I identify what all the variables are, you do need to know what the general equation for a sine function and cosine function is. So a sine starts at zero, cycles up to one on y, back to zero, down to negative one, and ends at 360. So this is y, and this is theta. We're in degree mode, and that's the general equation for y equals sine of theta y equals cosine of theta is similar but it starts up and ends up also cycles in 360 degrees this is theta high point of one low point of negative one that points at zero okay on the general equation this is going to be step one mark up the equation on the general equation, C is vertical shift, so that pushes the graph up. A is amplitude, it's how much it elongates the graph. So A is amplitude. I'm gonna jump over here to D. D is phase shift, how far it pushes it over. And the thing to remember on this, just like we did in algebra two, or integrated, is the negative pushes it to the right. So if it's a positive, it pushes it to the left. And then B gives you your period. It's not your period, but it gives you your period. So 360 divided by that value will give you your period. And your period's equal to 360 divided by B. So let's take a look at this example here. Step one, mark up my equation. Vertical shift. Amplitude, period is 360 divided by 3 or 120. And then this is phase shift pushed over. So there's step one, mark up your equation. Step two, label a y-axis. On the y-axis, I start up five. So that five says I go up five units. And then this two is how much I go up from the five. So five plus two gives me seven. Five minus two gives me three. On the period, I do a full cycle on 120 and I start at 30. So it means I start right here at 30 degrees over. And from there, I travel at 120 degrees. So 30 plus 120 is 150. The total distance of the period is 120. Half the distance is 60. So that halfway point would be 60 beyond 30 or 90. And then my quarter point would be half of that. So this would be plus 30, plus 30, plus 30, whoops, plus 30, plus 30. So I have all my equidistance points. So step two was label my y-axis, C plus A, C minus A, label my x-axis, where I start, 360 divided by three, how many units later I end. Step four, put in my critical points of that function. It's a sine function. So it's this graph right here, and it starts in the middle, meaning on the y-axis, the middle of my values on the y, 
on my x-axis, the end point is on the middle of my y-axis. The middle point of my x is the middle of my y, and then the first quarter it goes up, the third quarter it goes down. Now that I have all my critical points in, I connect my dots, and there's my sine graph that has been shifted up five, an amplitude of two, a period of 120, starting 30 degrees over. Lastly, check a value. So let me pick any, I pick any point on the graph. Let's say I pick 120 right here. So when theta is 120, 120 minus 30 is 90. 90 times three is 270. Sine of 270, sine of 270 is negative one. Negative one times two is negative two. Negative two plus five is three. So at, two, at 120, I should be at three and I am. So I check a point, plug it in. All right, so that's how you graph in degree measure with all four variables, C, A, B, and D. The fifth variable is whether you're in theta degree mode or whether you're in X radian mode. Next, I'll go over graphing on the TI-84 calculator. Okay, here's that same problem and here's my TI-84 plus CE. Um, and I'll just do a screenshot with my overhead projector on how to do this with the calculator. But again, let me just point out that step one is mark up the equation, vertical shift, amplitude, phase shift. This value right here gives me my period at 360 divided by three or 120. Step two, label my y-axis, label my x-axis, put in my critical points dependent on that function. And step five, um, check, pick a point, and plug it in and check. So let's go to my overhead and we'll do the same equation. Okay, here's my calculator here, the TI-84. Um, before you graph, you have to set your domain and range. You do that under window. So X min, uh, this is your X axis. It's really theta, but what we'll do here is we'll set the X min, we'll just stay in the first quadrant, so we'll set that to zero. Arrow down, x max, uh, 360 degrees. The scale, we'll put it factors of 90. Y min, again, we'll stay in the first quadrant. So Y min, we'll actually put down as, let's say, negative 1. Y max, 10 is good. Y scale, actually, Y max, we'll do something. Yeah, 10 is good scale and that's good so now i quit so i go second quit and then here i hit y equals and the graph is going to be five plus two sine i'm going to have to use double parentheses here three open parentheses again theta here's my independent variable theta minus 30, then you close that bracket and the other bracket. And then now I could hit graph. Um, and there's my graph. Something's wrong, so let's see here. I think probably under mode, we could see we're in radians. I need to be in degrees. So I'm gonna use my arrows down, go over to degrees, hit enter. So I'm in degree mode, I'm gonna quit. I'm going to go back to y equals, it's the same function, and now I'm going to hit graph, and there's my sine graph. So it has a vertical shift of 5, for 5 from 5 it goes up to, down to, it has a period, these cycles were 90, so it has a full cycle in 120, and it starts over at 30, so right there. Um, so that's how you graph trig functions on the TI-84+. Plus. If you want to get different measurements here, we could go back to our window, and we could set this scale here to 30s. Again, I quit. Back to Y equals, hit graph, and then now I could see a little clear, clear 30, 60, 90. So, now that I have a scale of 30, I can see it starts right here at 
35, and then it travels 30, 60, 90, 120 to end right here. So hopefully that helped. Um, I guess the most important thing is always remember what mode you're in. Theta is usually degrees and X is radian measure. Um, thanks for watching. I'm going to keep doing more of these um, TI-84 how to graph problems.